In this video, I'm going to show you my recipe for painting a pale brass. Hi everyone and welcome to another Brushstroke Painting Guide. I'm Brushstroke and as you heard from the intro there, the topic for this video is going to be looking at a recipe for painting pale brass. Now when you're painting your miniatures, you'll find that there's so many details that are going to be painted in metallic colours. And it's nice to have a range of different options rather than just your classic gold and silver. So pale brass is actually a lovely alternative because it gives that warmth and interest without being so overpowering like a lot of golds can be while still being a lovely contrast to any silver or gunmetal colours that you use on your model as well. Now for this video I'm going to be using a Necron model because it's predominantly metal based, but that doesn't mean that this recipe is just for Necrons, quite the contrary, you can use this on any metal item on any miniature you like and you can really mix it up with different silvers and golds as well and it will look great. Now before we begin, I think there's a few things I should mention which will help you get the most out of this video. Starting off with thinning your paints. So this recipe relies quite heavily on getting that nice clean smooth finish. So if you'd like to know more about how I thin my paints and how thin is thin, then you might want to check out the paint thinning video I did by clicking the link above. I also get asked a lot about the paintbrushes I use. Now, thanks to the awesome guys at Artist Opus, I now actually have a paintbrush set, which has brushes in it which are specifically picked to match the brushes that I use in all of my paint guides. So if you'd like more details on that, then please do click this link above. And then finally, this video recipe does rely heavily on some edge highlighting. So if you'd like some tips and tricks on how to improve your edge highlighting, then please do click that link above or check out all the links in the description below. Okay then, so let's make a start on some painting, and as I mentioned, I'm going to be painting a Necron for this example, just because it's a big metal object, but this recipe can be used on any metal item that you like. And the first thing you're going to notice is I've already primed my miniature piece, and for this I've just used some Vallejo Surface Primer in black, and then I've added a light grey zenithal highlight from about 45 degrees above just to pick out those details on camera. Now this zenithal highlight is not necessary for this recipe, it's just something that I do for my videos. So if you prefer you could just do an all over prime of a medium grey or black and the recipe would still work fine because the first step is going to be applying an all over base coat color and for this I'm going to use some Rune Lords Brass from Games Workshop. So really simple step just to start off with. I've thinned the paint with a little bit of water on my palette and the aim of this step is to get a nice clean and smooth coverage across all of the surface. Because I've thinned it down it does make it a little bit more transparent so I will need to apply several coats in order to build up to a solid finish. Now, Rune Lord Brass is a wonderful colour and it's interesting to note that Games Workshop did recently change the recipe of this. It's gone from being a layer paint, which was a little bit thinner, to now being a base paint. So for this recipe, do make sure that you get the base paint version because the coverage is a lot better and the pigment content and the concentration of that metallic fleck in the paint is a lot higher. So it is a much better paint and gives a much richer, smoother finish. Now for this step, I'm not being particularly neat, but I am being concerned about making sure the paint goes on cleanly and smoothly. It's particularly important when you're painting with metallic paints that you do this, because it's far better to apply multiple thin layers and make sure that those metallic flecks in the paint are evenly distributed across the whole of the surface, than to try and rush it and apply it too thickly, and you'll get heavy concentrations of those metallic flecks, and the paint will just all clump up and look really ugly. So do take your time, Make sure the paint is thinned on your palette and apply it as multiple layers to build up to a solid finish. Now in this particular case it only took a couple of layers. Now if you do have the luxury of having an airbrush then I would highly recommend that you do this step with your airbrush. Again I'd apply it as several thin layers just to make sure you get that even coverage of the metallic fleck across the whole of the surface and you build up to that rich solid finish. Now whichever method you use when you finish you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Which means we can move on to the next stage now, which is going to be adding a layer to our brass. And for this, I'm going to use a 50-50 mix of graphite from Darkstar Miniatures and Rune Lord Brass from Games Workshop. So the aim of this step really is to add that little bit more volume and definition to the metal. So what I'm doing is I'm painting in all of the raised areas and I'm making those a lot lighter. And I'm leaving untouched any areas which would be in shadow or in the recesses and in the gaps. 
And what this does, like I say, is it just adds that little bit more volume to the metal and gives it a bit more shape. So what I've done is I've added a 50-50 mix onto my palette and I've thinned it down so it flows really cleanly and smoothly. And I'm actually just going to apply a single layer to this. It's all about adding that little bit more shine and highlights to the areas which would catch the most light. And then on the underside of things and in the recesses, I'm going to leave the brass that we've already painted untouched. So for example, on the forearm here, it obviously curves round. So I'm going to paint the top area, which we're catching the light, but then just paint it down to the sides to the point where it starts to curve back in and it would go back into shadow. And I'm going to leave that untouched. And then moving on to the elbow joint here, I'm just going to paint the highlight shape onto the top of that, but not round the edges. And then moving on, repeat the same onto all of the other parts of the model. Now, at this stage, you don't need to be too concerned about getting smooth transitions and blends and things. All you're looking to do is add that single thin layer just to bring that shine and definition to the areas which would catch the most light. And it's the next stage that I'll actually tie it all together and bring in shadows and transitions. And then with that highlight layer added, you should now have something that looks a bit like this. Nice and shiny on all those top areas and then slightly darker in the recesses and on the underneath. And it's at this point I'm going to paint in all the other colours on the model. So I'm going to do that now, which means we can move on to the next stage, which is going to be applying a wash to all of the brass details. And for this, I'm going to use some Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. So another nice and simple step to follow on with then, I'm going to use this neat straight from the bottle. I'm going to step up to a large brush so I can get this done nice and quickly. Now that's not to mean that I can just throw this on and let it flood the model. Actually what I'm going to do is try and add it a little bit more methodically and encourage it to settle into all those recesses and all those grooves, fill in that detail and really add that shadow. But on any of the flatter areas, I'm going to encourage it away from the center and push it towards the edges to try and get a nice smooth transition on all these curves and shapes. And the only other thing to remember when using a wash is that it will take a little bit longer to dry so do make sure it is fully dry before moving on to the next stage. And now with that wash fully dry the brass is already looking really good. It's got a lot extra shadow to it and some real definition and more than good enough for a tabletop standard. But if you do want to move on and push it to the next level then the next step is going to be adding another highlight layer using the 50-50 mix of graphite from Dark Star Miniatures and Rune Lord Brass from Games Workshop. So this step is very similar to the one that we did previously, except this time I'm going to be a little bit more focused. I'm not going to do it to all the topmost areas. I'm going to do it on the areas that I want to draw the most focus or I feel would catch the most light. So definitely the head and face area to draw that attention. Top of the shoulders, top of the forearms. Um, not so much on the legs, probably just a small part on the knees and the feet where it catches the most light. But I've already got that shading and I've already got that definition from that wash. And because I did the pre-highlight before I added the wash, I've got that definition and shape as well. So this is really just a case of adding to those areas that I want to have that extra shine and draw that attention to. So for example, down the back here along the spine, I can add it to each of those sections and just increase that contrast. And just as with the previous stage, this is a thinned down 50-50 mix and I'm just applying a single layer just to add that extra shine. So it's still quite transparent and I can still benefit from that blend and transitions that the wash brought. But like I say, it's just a case of adding that interest and highlight. Okay, so with that highlight layer now added, the brass is really starting to pop. And there's only one final stage now just to add, and that's to add an edge highlight to all of the brass. And for this, I'm going to use some chrome from Vallejo. Absolutely fantastic paint this. If you've never used it before, I highly recommend that you get some of this right away. It's fantastic for edge highlighting any metals at all. You use it straight from the pot, so no need to thin, and it is almost like liquid metal. It's absolutely fantastic. In fact, it's so bright under my lights, even the camera's not really picking it up. But what you want to do for this stage is work your way around all the brass areas, picking out those sharp edges with your edge of your brush to give it that extra definition and highlight. So depending on the model you're painting, this could be quite a time consuming step, but it is worth doing well and it is worth doing neatly. So do take your time and try not to rush. As always, if you do make any mistakes, don't panic, just let it dry and you can always go back and neaten things back up again with your 50-50 mix later. 
So like I say, it's just a case of slowly working your way around all of the model and picking out all of those edges. And after a while, I actually find it gets quite relaxing. You sort of get into a bit of a rhythm and you can hit those edges with that sweet part of the brush just on the tip. But like I said at the start of this video, if you do want some hints and tips in terms of how I improved my edge highlighting, then please do check out this video above because I think it will help you a lot. Okay then, with those final edge highlights now added, the brass for my model is now complete. And all that remains to be done is to paint in the rest of the details and finish off my model. Thank you so much for watching this video, I really hope you found it useful. And of course a massive thank you to my channel members whose names are going across the screen now. Your support for the channel is very much appreciated. If you did enjoy this video, then please do hit that like button and drop a comment below. If you'd like to see more of these recipe videos, then please let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see. Also, don't forget to check out the description below where I'm going to list all of the paints that I've used for this recipe and where you can get those at discount prices, so it's definitely worth checking out. And you'll also find all the links to the videos I mentioned earlier too. If you have enjoyed this video, then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. Speaking of other videos, I'd love it if you stayed on the channel, so why not stay and check out another recipe video or perhaps one of my other painting videos where you can see these recipes in action.